This is a simple $12 tachometer we purchased from Amazon, which also has an hour gauge for service intervals. Link in the description. It's waterproof, has a replaceable battery that claims to last for years, is very simple and easy to set up, and weighs almost nothing. You're going to want to read the manual though, because you'll waste about 5 minutes fumbling around with the only two buttons on it trying to set it like a wristwatch. It's just <laughs> it's a waste of time. The manual is simple and easy to understand, so setup's a breeze. We set it for 1P1R, which is 1 pulse per 1 revolution, because we have a single cylinder 2 stroke. But this will work with four strokes and twin cylinder engines. For service intervals, I like to go with about 12 hours of engine runtime. After about 12 hours of engine runtime, it'll start flashing at you to let you know it's time to do things like check your brakes, your chain, and your bucking bar grease, and all that good fun stuff that you're probably not going to do when it flashes anyways, but it's there if you want to use it. A bit of sticky tape keeps it from moving around, and some zip ties secure it to the handlebars. Now this has a small screen and a refresh rate of only about a half second, so it's not a tachometer you'd use if you're looking for something kind of showy, this is just for technical purposes. Setting your idle, looking for your peak power RPM range, and your maximum RPM range. Which is handy when you plan on doing things like more efficient port work, or getting a tuned pipe down the road. It has a single cable that wraps around your spark plug wire and senses the magnetic pulses, and that's how it reads your engine RPMs. Well, that's pretty much it. A bit of tape secures it to the wire, and some wire loom cleans up the build. Alright, let's move on. Alright, we're here with the Bassett Blaster. Shout out to one of our YouTube viewers, The Authority, for hooking us up with an HP carburetor for testing. I've been swapping the jets out on it. Um, what's happening is it pulls just fine, but at wide open throttle, once the motor starts to line out, it just completely dumps and starts four-stroke and breaks up like crazy. So I've gone down to a 72 jet up from the YD100 stock 77. Now I think this came with a 72, but I never tested it with the stock jet. Up here we got the new tachometer. Now during the ride, you guys probably aren't going to be able to see this. Even if I pointed it right at the camera, the screen's so small that I don't think it would matter. And here we've got a GPS unit we've been testing for a while. More on that in a little bit. Now for this tachometer, I mostly just use this for tuning purposes, to see what your max RPM is, to find out what RPM range your bike is pulling the strongest at, as well as setting your idle, which isn't really a big deal, but it is nice to have a consistent idle against uh, across all your bikes. Use it for whatever you want, whether you just want it on your bike for fun, or whether you would like to get some relevant information out of the RPM range on your bike, but they're really easy to set up, they're waterproof, and the battery in these things is supposed to last for a long time I'm talking years now I don't know if that's if you turn it off manually or if it's when it goes into standby mode see when the motor's not running it goes into standby mode where the display stays on it just shows you the hours and I assume that the amount of juice it sucks out of the battery would be similar to like a wristwatch so in standby mode it's probably still gonna last for a long time when I think about it I do manually turn it off you just do that by holding down both of these buttons and it'll turn off now, whenever you kick over the motor, it'll automatically turn back on as it senses the pulses from the spark plug wire. Anyways, I'm gonna set the GPS app on my phone so I can get a max RPM rate, uh, sorry, a max speed range, and we'll compare it at the end of the ride to see if the max speed we hit on this is the same as we get on our phone. For this GPS unit, sometimes it can take a minute or two before it locks on to satellites, especially if you haven't used it in a couple of days. Or if you move to a new location without using it, it'll take it a while to lock on to satellites. But don't freak out if after like two or three minutes you don't have a speed yet. Just give it a chance. It's always worked for me. Just when I first turn it on, sometimes it takes a while. All right, so let's go ahead and hit start.
about 36 on the phone and I remember seeing about 35 ish on that so looks like these are lining up so I'm guessing that's pretty accurate I saw max rpms on here at about 6800 so on to my thoughts and opinions with my limited experience on the HP carburetor this was gifted to us from a viewer who got it with his BBR tuning kit and said he could never get it to run right. When he put the NT car back on his motor, he said it ran much better. We had pretty much the same story with the YD100. I tried pretty much every jet in my collection within reason, not going too lean obviously, and I even went as far as to drill out some jets so I could get any gaps in my collection, hoping to find a sweet spot. We never found it. The problem is the very unique design, which we'll get into in a moment. Here's how it ran. When I would tune it for wide open throttle, which is usually what you do first on a standard carburetor, you could get it to run decent. Never quite as well as an NT carburetor, but decent enough to be happy. The problem is when it's tuned for wide open throttle, it's way too lean in the mid-range. And if you tune it for the mid-range, it's way too fat up top. I don't run my bike wide open throttle all the time, I like to cruise. But when I do run my bike wide open throttle, I don't want it to fall on its face. This does use 5mm jets like the NT carburetors, but it has a very unique design on the slide. There is no needle adjustment. And as most of you already know, needle adjustments are critical for mid-range tuning. When you want to cruise, that's usually done on the needle adjustments. The jets mainly for wide open throttle. Mainly. There's some overlap and complicated stuff that goes into it, but that's it in a nutshell. When you raise the slide, there's a straw that sticks up through the barrel, which is part of the jet. And this straw has holes poked in it. One at the bottom, the middle, and the top, and they get fatter as they go up. You notice very distinguished steps in the power band as you uncover these holes. It's not as smooth of a transition as you would get with an NT carburetor. Now you can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think this carburetor is designed for a scooter with a constantly variable transmission that's designed to be run wide open throttle most of the time. It would make sense because this design does kind of complement that. Anyways, let's move on. busy past two weeks. I filmed two videos, but only had time to edit the one. As soon as this goes live, I'll be working on the next one, which is a 50cc two-stroke kit. Yes, that's right. The anemic little kit that some sellers lie to people about and fool them into thinking it's the 66 kit. Well, we decided to buy one on purpose, even though it's not worth it in my opinion, but we're going to do the best we can with it. Look forward to that in a day or two. As a gift for those of you who made it to the end of the video, I found a part which will come in handy for some of you. Once I had bearing failures on a clutch basket during a ride, 
which caused all the little tiny bearings to fall out of the clutch basket. Well, on Amazon for about $22 and two weeks shipping, I found this. It has a shielded, contained bearing set for the basket, and looks pretty well machined in my opinion. This means maintenance and longevity should be a big improvement over the stock clutch basket. Leave a link in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and until the next one, ride safe.